Hi and welcome to another Milky Way photography video. As you know, we're in the peak of the Milky Way season and I'm sharing a series of videos to help you improve your Milky Way photography. So this is the third video of a series of four. The last one is gonna be this Sunday and it's gonna be a live stream, a live webinar this Sunday at 1 p.m. EST. And if you want to join, you can check the details in the comments. And in this webinar, I'm gonna show you something that is gonna be a game changer in your Milky Way photography. So stay tuned because that live webinar is gonna be epic. Now, talking about the previous videos, as you remember, we saw in the first video how to reduce the noise using different techniques. Then we talk about trackers and how using a tracker is the best way to capture the most quality in your Milky Way images. And we talk about one of the possible cons when you are tracking, that is doing the blending. As you know, we are having a perfectly sharp image of the stars and another blurry image for the foreground. So we have to capture two separate images and doing the blending. Now in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to do a blending. You're going to see that this is pretty simple and straightforward. So with a further ado, let's jump into the computer and let's do the blending. So as you see, we have here two different images. We have this image here and another one here. They are captured in the same spot with the same composition. And the other reason is that in one of them, the camera was moving for the image. So this, for example, was taken with a tracker and you see the settings. The time for this was at 256 seconds, so it was a relatively long exposure. F2.8 and my lens was a 1.8 lens, so I was uh, closing the aperture a couple of stops. And ISO 800, as you see I'm using a lower ISO to have less noise and a higher dynamic range in my image. So this is my track image, as you see everything is perfectly clean, everything looks perfect. and. If you notice the foreground is a bit blurry so that's why i capture a separate image for the foreground like this one here where i have more noise here in the sky and less dynamic range but if i move into the foreground this is perfectly sharp so what we're doing now is uh, blending these two images and this is pretty simple i have to select both images here right click edit in and open as layers in photoshop if you're using Capture One, Luminar, or any other piece of software, you can do the same thing. Just take both images and take them to Photoshop. So we are now in Photoshop, and here we have our two images, our image for the foreground and the image for the sky. Now it's time to do the blending, and when you're doing a blending, the first thing you have to do is a very good selection. Uh, thankfully, nowadays, doing a blending and a selection in Photoshop is pretty easy. There are so many different ways. Uh, one of the easiest ways when there are mountains, like in this case, with a defined shape, is doing a quick selection using the quick selection tool. We can just drag the lines here, always go to the base layer and draw in here the line. This is gonna be automatically selected. You can also do the one of the new tools like the sky is a replacement. That's gonna work pretty well as well. But in these cases where they're like a defined shape, I recommend using the quick selection tool. Always make sure that everything is fine in your selection. And once this is ready, and one of the best ways to fine tune this selection is going to select, modify, and feather. And if we feather by one pixel, as you can see here, the selection is going to be a bit better. Now we simply have to go to the layer of the sky and creating a new mask. We are going to have the first selection done. So as you see, this is the blending. But as you notice, since the sky is moving when we are tracking, there are some areas, and this is pretty uh, common when you are tracking, where you will find that there are some areas from the track shot. So we have to fix those, and to fix this is pretty simple. We have to go to the sky layer, make a selection, say like a wider area, and for example, to get rid of this, I can hit Ctrl or Command T, and warping, we can take the extreme here of the frame, and slowly hide that area. So hit OK, and that's gonna be fixed, so as you notice, we're fixing this area here. Now we're going to fix this. This is a bit longer, but we have to do the same process. I'm going to create a longer area. And now Command T, Warp, and I'm gonna stretch out from the bottom. 
you have to be very careful because we don't want to stretch out the stars too much so be very careful and do this very slowly so I'm taking this one here and sometimes you can actually do it in two steps if you are stretching too much so this is the first one for example and I'm going to do another selection now and doing the same thing so warp and using the extreme here this is almost ready yeah that should be fine and now we hit ok and we zoom in as you see there is no mark of the track image so now this is the blending and as you see we are doing the initial blending. One recommendation in this case, for example, the exposures are very similar, but if you're capturing, for example, a longer exposure for the foreground because you want to capture more detail, one thing I recommend to do is going to the foreground layer, going to filter, camera roll filter, and here we can take a gradient tool and drag a gradient here. And what we can do is reduce exposure and create a gradient just to create a better transition between the foreground and the sky. So I can do something like this, hit OK. Yeah, and I create like a better transition. As I said, in this case, it's not really noticeable, but when there is like a big difference between the foreground and the sky, that, that happens very often, that's one of the best ways to blend the images. The end goal is to have both images as a single image. So as you notice, if we, for example, zoom in and you see the difference, here is the untracked shot with a ton of noise. And if I put my track image, it's perfectly sharp with all the colors, with all the details and everything is looking perfect. Now, for example, the good thing about tracking is that if I take this image and if I just start applying some adjustments, like for example, some curves, and I stretch the image here, you're gonna see how you can you will see all the details, all the colors, everything in the Milky Way is gonna pop up. So that's why I highly recommend to do tracking because everything is gonna be much better in your image. Once the blending is done, you can just take everything, create a single stamp layer, and now you can start doing your post-processing. So as you see, doing a blending is not really difficult. It's easy. There are some situations when it can be a bit more complex, like for example, when there are trees in the horizon or some branches, but you can use other tools like the sky replacement and other things. And that way, doing a blending is not really difficult. So you see, using a tracker is the best way to capture high quality images of the Milky Way. I hope you liked this video so far. And don't miss the live webinar, the live stream this Sunday, 1 p.m. EST to learn a ton more about tracking, about post-processing. I'm gonna show you a ton of tips, tricks, and something that is gonna change your Milky Way photography forever. If you want to join this live webinar, you can check all the information in the comments to join this webinar. There's gonna be a link, and there's gonna be also a Q&A where you can ask any questions. We're gonna discuss many things about Milky Way photography, hang out, spend some time together, and it's gonna be super fun, informative, and helpful. So see you next Sunday, and happy shooting and clear skies if you are shooting the Milky Way.